Hi everyone! So please bear with me as this is the first tutorial video I've ever made and there's definitely a learning curve here. This tutorial is for our family gratitude art piece. This can be made as a group effort or in parts by many people or just by you. I started by creating these watercolor abstract leaves. Watercolors are a fun fluid medium while they're wet, you can load other colors onto the shape you've created and get these lovely feathered lines and spots. These are called blooms. The blooms are always different and spread to where the paint is still wet. When dry, you can make tiny thin lines using an almost dry brush. You can add all kinds of patterns and shapes and colors to make all of your leaves different. You do not need to be an amazing watercolor artist to do any of this. Just play with your paint. Don't have watercolors? Use acrylic paint, markers, crayons, or whatever you do have. I love watercolors because they are so vibrant and fun to work with. This is a student grade set I just adore. This set is called the Lucas Aquarelle Studio Set and I got it on sale at Jerry's Artorama for about $24. I think it's well worth that price if you're looking to start with this media. I'm using Canson Cold Press 140 pound paper here, but use any kind of multimedia paper you have access to. Printer paper will not work for wet media like paint, but in any case, I recommend a thicker paper anyway, so this craft lasts. I'll put links to my supplies in the description below. As you can see, the shapes I'm creating are completely abstract, and I've limited myself to about seven colors here. If you've taken my abstract painting class before, you know I recommend sticking to a specific palette, along with limiting the amount of colors you're using, and not necessarily using every color you have. Want to make this less work or easier for small hands to help later on? Go ahead and make those leaves bigger. So here I'm demonstrating a cutting technique I show in all of my collage classes. This technique always surprises people because we learn how to cut in preschool and never really revisit that skill afterwards. So here I am showing how my cutting hand stays fairly still and the paper is what's moving. I turn the paper while slowly closing the scissors. On tight turns or fussy cuts, I move the paper back and forth to get a scallop-like edge. And for corners, I will usually cut one side, then flip the paper around to get the other side. Cutting twice is sometimes less fatiguing than trying to cut something out of a large size piece of paper. Cut once to a manageable size, then again to fussy cut. Your scissor hand typically only opens and closes the scissors, so you don't have too much fatigue on that hand. Don't enjoy the fussy cutting? Go ahead and make them all a basic leaf shape. I won't tell. Some of the smaller leaves I left attached to bigger leaves when I cut them out, both because it was easier than cutting them each out but also because having different shapes and sizes would look cool when I put them together later. And here I am cutting more leaves and more leaves and more leaves. But honestly, 
All of this maybe took 15 minutes and you can do it while sitting on your couch. So bonus. Here they are all cut. Aren't they gorgeous? I was tempted to leave them this way and just spread them out across the table, but really did want something that I could hang if I wanted to. So I kept going. I had my family write things they were grateful for on the back of each leaf. Some of them are a little tongue in cheek. After cutting out all those shapes, I sewed them together with fishing wire. Now you can use whatever you've got at home, yarn, twine, sewing thread, or decide you aren't into sewing at all and leave them cut. They'll still look lovely on your holiday table. The sew technique is simple. Three holes in each leaf, one in through the top, one down next to that first one, and then one out at the bottom. This ensures that the thread runs underneath each leaf and not on the painted side and makes it look pretty when you lay it down. I have arthritis in my right hand, so I found it a little hard to push the needle through that thicker paper. You could absolutely make bigger leaves and then just hole punch them. them all along the fishing wire and then laid it out on the table how I wanted. You could have some facing up and some down to see the gratitude words or hang it in your doorway. This is just a fun little art project and a good way to show gratitude this season. A way to remind ourselves what's really important right now. And it looks gorgeous. I'm happy to take your comments or questions here or just shoot me an email. Thanks for watching and happy crafting.